Alright, hey guys, this is a video I wasn't expecting to make today or anytime soon. Anyway, we're back with the K1 Revo 101 uh, plus uh, just a normal plus version or the crystal version. It's the same process. Uh, apparently, there's a new firmware update, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the firmware update. Uh, so here's the link. I'll probably um, do a direct link to the actual file you need to download, but if you ever want to check for a later update, uh, this is the page you go to. All you have to do is just click brush firmware. And then you pick your version. This is the old K101. That last update is 2014. Here's the SP version. That last update is 2012. And the uh, most recent version is K101 Plus. Again, this is for the standard plus, and this is for the crystal one. So you see, there's quite a few updates. I believe the last, the version that my Revo shipped with, both of them, were um, 15, which means 2015, 118, which means January 18th, 2015. Since then, there has been two updates. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they have. When you go ahead and download the most recent file, again, they're dated. So let's go ahead and download the file. And it'll, there'll be two buttons. I already have Google Translate on, so this may look a little bit different for you. But you click the most recent one. And the button on the left will be uh, download. The button on the right will be close the page. Uh, this is what they'll probably look like. You can see right here. But just click the left side button. And it will pop up with a file name. Just go ahead and download it. takes a little while to download since it's a server that's not probably anywhere nearby. So anyway, uh, I already have it downloaded on my computer and the readme file will look something like this. So we can't actually read the patch notes. So what I had to do was I had to, up to open it with Notepad++ which supports um... hold on Get the file back up again I'm not going to bother editing this video because it's probably important for you to see all the steps because firmware updates are not something you want to just mess around with on a whim. Anyway, so what you want to do is you want to, you'll have your two files when you finish downloading. I'll probably rehost it someplace else for the latest version, but for a newer version, it'll want to come here directly. Anyway, so uh, first thing you want to do is take your SD card from your Revo's um, card reader thing. You know that little K card thing that you put in your Revo? Yeah, take the SD card of that and put it into your computer. <coughs> Alright, and it should pop up. Here it is, GBA. And as you see, it just finished downloading the file, so it's pretty slow, especially for a um, pretty small file. Let me just set myself away real quick so we don't get bothered by that anymore. Alright, so this is the root of my uh, SD card. As you see, as, as soon as you open up the SD card, you'll be taken to the root folder. You may have a bunch of other stuff here. On this one, I do not. Alright, so what I'm going to do is take these two files that are in a zip folder and just drag and drop them into the root of my SD card. Alright, and if we were to open up the readme file, again, it looks really, really messed up because Notepad can't read Chinese. So just right click and I'm going to open it with Notepad. Plus plus. And as you can see, here is the Chinese text. Alright, so what we're going to do is, what I already did, was I took it into Google Translate. So here's the important part. Whenever you're doing a firmware update, you always want to make sure that something important has changed. Because firmware, when you update your firmware, even if it goes, even if you download the file officially and stuff, there's still a chance something can go wrong. So we're going to go ahead and look at the um, firmware update. So it says for the uh, February 24th update, the main thing that was changed was... Uh, modify parameters in display mode so that the screen can be centered down and up. It is not to solve problems with previous color and centered error. So that seems like the most recent update in 2016 mainly had to do with uh, TV out, I believe, or just some other display mode. Basically, it had to do with how the image was displayed on the screen. That sounds kind of important, but not super big. So let's see what the other 2016 update was. Uh, that one was for. Uh, 3 slash 10, sorry. 3 slash 10 was the 3 by 2 formatting. So that just means something where they changed the formatting. Uh, the next one is the bigger one. And this says it uh, changes the formatting again, 3 by 2. Displays vertical screen pool. Uh, displays in a row. RTC compensation plus fine tuning. That's a really important thing. Because as you saw in my review, I said the RTC has some issues. I don't remember if I mentioned this before. I might not have known it during the review. But I learned, learned later on that... Uh, if you leave the RTC on too long, sometimes it will start skipping time. It will go too far into the future, 
and it won't be synced up with time perfectly. So that's pretty important. And it says 5 to 8 backlight uh, at maximum brightness is unchanged. The lower is the minimum brightness. So that, what that sounds like, it sounds like um, you can't turn off the backlight anymore, which is pretty good. So it will just have a lower um, backlight, um, and it won't turn completely off. That's pretty cool. Increase wake up mode normal slash AB settings can be set to A slash B to button wake up to sleep. Okay, so that sounds like it sounds like you can make it so your GBA won't automatically wake up when any button's pressed. It sounds like you can change it to pressing A or B. We'll look at that when we actually get into the actual flashing. I'll try to add timestamps. This is a lot of information. Uh, increased reset game in menu game join freeload restart ROM games. Not exactly sure what that means. Sounds like it just made it restarting games a new option to reset games, which is also really cool. 8-bit uh, ROM emulation supports flash and zip files. That means you can actually zip up your old 8-bit games and they'll run while compressed. And adjusted the bottom bottom electrical red threshold. Uh, I guess that means it adjusts the power for when your little light turns red. So it will turn red, I guess, sooner or later. I don't know. Anyway, this actually does sound like it's a pretty good update. Mainly the older ones. But if we're going to be updating, we might as well go with the latest version. So like I said, when we're updating, we're getting all of this. So by going to the latest version, yes, we do get the most recent update, which is a small thing. But we also get the big update too. So this is actually what's worth updating for. All right, so we already copied the files to our SD cards. Let's go ahead and go to our K1. As we can see here, we are on an older version because this the PSN is the um, serial number for the firmware update. And again, that's the date. We haven't updated since 2015. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and just double check to make sure you put your files on your SD card. All right, so we have K underscore firmware dot bin. All right, now I'm going to turn off my K1. All right, and as you see, it says no signal here. All right, and now I'm picking the SD card out of my card reader and putting it in the K cartridge. I'm not sure if this is actually going to show up because I'm not sure they have TV out for firmware update. But I guess we'll find out the hard way. All right, so the next step is, uh, it says we have to I believe hold select while we turn on the unit. Let's find out. Yes, hold the select button while booting. All right, let's see if it shows up. Holding select and powering the unit on. All right, it looks like it did not read the K card. That's fine. Every once in a while it gets a little bit dirty and doesn't get red. If that happens, just wipe off your, mic your, your micro SD card and clean out your cartridge and then try again. Alright, I'm holding select, powering it on. There we go. New firmware loaded. Okay, so here's the options. It says press start to update firmware. Um, before you press start, make sure you have a decent amount of battery in your uh, K1. You don't want this running out, so I say charge it for at least 30 minutes before you try this. I have mine actually plugged into an external battery, and I've been charging it for the last like 20 minutes or so. So I say at least 30 minutes, um, but let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to press start. Let's start the firmware update. And again, this installs to the actual internal of the K1. It is not installed to your um, K cartridge, so uh, if this messes up, your entire unit would be bricked. So, yeah. Alright, it says updating. Moment of truth, guys. Come on. And it says OK. So, if it said fail, that means we'd have an error, but it says OK, so we should be good. Alright, let's go ahead and turn off the power like it says. Alright, let's turn it back on. <coughs> Alright, it looks like I got a new, oh that's the same boot logo. This is my old K1, so it doesn't have any of my backgrounds or boot logos or anything. Alright, now if we go over to help, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Yep, see, now we're on the 2016 update. Let's go to options, see if there's any new options. 
sorry. Okay, I forgot you have to press L and R. All right, uh, let's check under RTC maybe. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay on here. Okay, there's no new options in there. What did it say there's supposed to be an option for? Uh, sleep. So that would be under art. Uh, that would be under miscellaneous, I believe. Oh, here we go. Wake up mode. See, that's a new feature they added. So if we press A on this, there we go. A B. So this means if we go to sleep mode. Okay, now it's in sleep mode. Now I'm pushing a bunch of buttons. You can hear that. It's not waking up from sleep mode. If I press A and B at the same time, then it wakes up. I actually really, really like that. That's pretty cool, because I was tired of accidentally bumping my GBA when I put it in sleep mode and having it wake up. That's a really nice feature. All right, uh, were there any other features we could really test? I think the main other thing was the TV out or the rows and lines. So I'll post some images and make a, a album down below where you can see what the differences would be because I don't think I can show that on camera with this. So, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's super, super long, but firmware updates aren't anything that should be taken lightly. So I hope this helped you guys, and I will see you later. Bye.